Hey guys, Jay with Sure Shot Night Vision here. Today we're going to be looking at two long range night vision clip ons, the PVS 27 and the PVS 30. We're going to look at the small and large differences between the two, as well as optical performance, and maybe this video will help you decide which one you want to get for your kit. Let's get it. All right, the first thing we're going to go over here is our dust cover and our output window. That's going to be our glass that we're calling our output window here. And this piece here, on the back of both of these clip-ons are what we're going to call our dust cover. Overall length on your PVS 27 is going to be 8 and 5 eighths inches. The overall length on our PVS 30 is 9 and 5 eighths inches. So roughly 1 inch longer on the PVS 30 versus the 27. I say roughly because sometimes these dust covers may land in a little bit different position as well as the objective lens on the PVS 30. The 27 objective lens will always be where it is, but the dust cover could be a little different. So if you measure your 27 and it's a little off from eight and five eighths, no big deal. It's just the distance of the dust cover from the prism. Okay, now with that being said, on the PVS 27, in the event that you scratch your output window, it's not that big of a deal. I can replace that for you. And like I said, it's not a hugely expensive mistake, but it is, of course, something you want to try and refrain from doing. However, on the PBS 30, do not scratch that output window because it's irreplaceable. And the reason being is because how this thing is collimated, this actual lens here is not just a protecting lens. This is actually part of the collimation process. So please be sure, always keep note, make note of it. Uh, don't clean that lens with a dirty t-shirt on a hog hunt. You really don't want to scratch that. It'll basically render the thing useless. Either that or you just have to deal with a scratch lens for the rest of your life. All right, now on the PBS 27, you'll see right here, this is our focal mechanism. All you got to do is roll the knurled knob, and that's how you're going to focus your PBS 27. Now on your PBS 30, You'll see the distance between your focal mechanism would be right here if it were a 27, but it's much farther forward up here. So this is your focal mechanism on a PBS 30, whereas this is your focal mechanism on a PBS 27. So if we get the two lined up end to end here, you'll see this is your focus and this is your focus. So it's much farther forward on the PBS 30 versus the PBS 27. And that's something you may want to take into consideration if you have a long rifle platform, say you're running a 3 to 27 Smith & Bender, which is not a very short scope, and you're kind of a short-armed fella, you're probably not going to be able to reach that. There's a couple options out there to try and fix that, but it's always going to be relatively a problem compared to the 27. Now, let's say we live in Canada, We've got 30 feet of snow we're trying to hunt in. We're probably going to have some big boxing gloves on our hands to keep frostbite away. This may not be very easy to get to. This little knurled knob with a big set of turbo gloves on. Whereas the outermost portion of this being machined in and indented quite well, I'll say. You could probably focus this with the biggest pair of gloves that you could find. Literally boxing gloves, I would imagine. So that could be taken into consideration in where you live, when the type of conditions that you typically might use your clip on. Now, while we're right here beside it, we'll go to the power on, power off, as well as your manual gain knob on both systems. On both ones, identically, you're going to pull and rotate. Same thing here, you're gonna pull, rotate, you'll feel a click. And as you rotate both of these back farther, you're going to lower your manual gain. Basically dimming your image and reducing the amount of scintillation you see through the image. We're not going to go into technicals on how you should set your manual gain or whether you should even touch it. We're not going into that here. Well, that'll be for a, a separate video. Now, again, since we're beside it, we'll go to the battery compartment. In this particular PBS 30, we have a single battery housing newer unit that uh, 
these PBS 30s here use a single battery and it can either be a double A with this portion of the cap down or they can be powered with a CR123 with this portion of the cap down. You run a CR123, simply put that portion down, put your silicone cap back up here to protect it, and that's that. Or you can flip it and use a single AA. Whatever you choose to use, no big deal. The only big deal to ever speak about as far as batteries on these things is don't leave them in there. That's the most important thing with these, aside from going and trying to look at the sun with them. Never leave batteries in these. Guys, I fix these things all the time from some department left a battery in it for three years, and when they went to use it, it's completely corroded and basically worthless now. Here's our PBS 27. Battery compartment on here is going to utilize two AA's. Again, I highly recommend lithiums in these whether it be the 27 or the 30, to try and steer away from some corrosion issues. Some leaking alkalines can take a lot of money in optics and throw it down the drain for you. Okay, now that we went over the focus and the battery compartments, let's look at how they mount. All right, the PBS 30, we've went over this before in some previous videos, but on the PBS 30, if you need to loosen your rail system, Get this out of the way here. All right, if you need to loosen your PVS 30 on the rail, these two Allen head screws here are going to be how you do that. This is your release switch for your mount. Pull that back, it'll release it, flip it open and you'll hear a click when she's locked in. Now the PVS 27, totally different. Uses a LaRue mount, and your tension is going to be applied with these screw, with, excuse me, with these nuts here. The back one is going to slide forward and backward to lock and unlock it. And you also have two lubrication holes there, if I can get them, one there, and one there, just for a little drop of lubricant to keep it from getting all stiff. Now moving on to the most obvious difference between the 27 and the 30, the objective lenses. The PVS 30 uses a standard refraction lens, where the PVS 27 uses a catadioptric lens. What the hell is a catadioptric lens? A cat lens uses curved mirrors and refraction glass instead of just using specifically refraction glass. Now let's talk light gathering capabilities. The PVS 27 is definitely going to win this category, but not by leaps and bounds. The PVS 30 is a very well designed optic and it does good in very low light environments. However, it just can't beat the sheer size and design of the cat lens in the PVS 27. So I would say from 5 to 10% performance gain with the 27 in really low light environments. Again, I don't want to harp on the 30 saying that it's bad because it isn't. It does very good in low light environments, but the 27 is just going to be too hard to beat here for that standard refraction lens on the PBS 30. So this should come into play for law enforcement. If you're on top of a roof, you're shooting into a dark area, 150 yards, 50 yards, 500 yards, it doesn't matter the difference. If it's really dark, and you really just want to stay passive because you don't want to shine a laser and let everybody know where to shoot you at, and you might want to think about the 27 over the 30. Even if it's performing 5% better, that 5% may be enough to keep you passive and uh, leave that LA-5 off to where you don't show the world where to shoot you. So keep that in mind for guys with their life depending on these optics. The ability to stay passive, even for one time that you couldn't do it with another one, may save your life or a team member's life. So if you're really trying to stay passive, the PVS-27 is definitely going to get you there longer than the PVS-30 will. You're eventually going to need some illumination with both of these optics. However, you'll need it with the 30 before you will the 27. Now we've talked about 
form, function, and the optical design behind these, let's talk about the overall weight of them. The PVS-27 looks way bigger than the PVS-30. However, it only weighs 3.6 ounces more than the PVS-30. The overall weight of the 30 is 2.9 pounds, or 46.4 ounces. And again, the total length is 9 and 5 eighths inches on average. Where the 27 is 3.125 pounds, also 50 ounces, and it's 8 and 5 eighths inch long. The PBS 30, this particular design with the single battery compartment, gives you the ability to run two different batteries. That could be very beneficial in a scenario to where you don't have any batteries left over, but you have one in your nods, or maybe your Surefire light on the side of your helmet, maybe your laser, etc. You could rob a battery from something somewhere and get this thing back up and going. Where your PBS 27 uses strictly two AA batteries. A lot of your PBS 30s, mostly the PBS 26 and the PBS 30 refurbs, are going to use the same exact battery housing as you see here on the 27 with two AA's. Again, this specific model uses the CR 123 or the AA. Now let's talk collimation. The collimation guarantee on both of these are practically the same. Depending on what literature you read on the Knight's Armament Unit, you're going to be anywhere from a half MOA to one MOA deviation on your point of impact with your collimation. Same thing with the PBS 27 here. Whether it be OSTI, FLIR, or Teledyne, all essentially the same PBS 27, and essentially the same collimation guarantees on the 27 as the 30, anywhere from a half to one MOA, depending on what literature you're reading that they put out. Now, how well will your collimation hold? On the PBS 30, you're almost never going to get POI deviation. And that's specifically due to the design of the back end of this optic. How it all goes together and how it collimates. And on your PBS 27, it's completely different. So on the PBS 27, it will shift. I would almost be as comfortable to say it's going to shift. It may take 10 hours, it may take 10 rounds, it may take 10 years. I don't know when, but eventually, by the way that it's designed, it can shift, and it has to be somewhat expected and checked frequently. Now, having said that, every clip-on that leaves my shop here carries a lifetime collimation guarantee. As long as I'm alive, I will recollimate it within spec for free. No questions asked. End of story. So if you get a PBS 27 from me, don't panic. If it shifts, just call me. I'll have it fixed within a week and back in the mail to you. Now, I hope this video helped underline some of the small and large differences between these two different platforms. Uh, one thing I would like to add is even though the PBS 27 is very slightly better in extremely low light environments, even the PBS 27 could use a good illuminator sometimes. It's a good thing to have an illuminator handy if you're running a night vision clip on. They're all going to need it at some point, so keep that in mind. Hey, thanks for watching. If I miss something, let me know. If there's another difference that y'all want to know between these two, I'll get it done. If there's another video you guys want to see on a couple different clip ons or any different optics for that matter, drop a comment below. I'd love to help out. If you don't have my number, it's easy to find. And my email is too. If you got any questions and concerns, give me a call, drop me a line. I'd love to help out. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing y'all in some more videos. Thanks.